this model is ridiculously huge. I'm going to have to break it down into a few smaller pieces to do the painting on him. One nice thing is there were very, very few areas that needed filling. You can see a seam just here. It's where two halves of the body meet. There's another one in here. One a bit more obvious on this side where his arms raised. But overall, the body doesn't have very many. There's On the legs, you have various sections that glue together, so you do have a bit of a seam down here. They're very minor. So I'm using Ravel's Plasto. The only problem with this stuff is the drying time varies quite a bit depending on thickness of the product, humidity, all that sort of thing. So you know it's dried when it goes from sort of this putty type colour to white. And once it's gone white, you can then sand it all with sandpaper or a file or even a craft knife scraped across the surface. So I have to leave this section until that's dried. And given how humid it is lately, that might take until tomorrow. Same thing goes for the base. There was a fairly bad seam line here. I've already done some sanding, but the plasto is not quite as set as I'd like it to be. But the big crack in the rock, this is a deliberate sculpt choice. Now, I suspect, if you were very clever, you could cut this crack through because this rock's hollow on the inside and then pop an LED in from the inside and then you'd have a magical glow coming out of the rock. I'm not that clever so I shan't be doing that but you can imagine that happening. So this piece I'll also have to set aside for now. That leaves me with his shield. I'm going to deviate from the box art on this one because I have a good idea of how I want this guy to look and I've been looking at some um, archaeological finds to try and get a sense of what these sort of designs are. They're sort of a, a model of lots of different eras squashed together, but they seem very strongly influenced by a lot of Bronze Age European artwork and um, jewellery and precious metal finds. So I'm going to lean into that, and I'm going to be painting all of the metalwork bronze. This also means any gemstones I might do with things like garnets, and potentially I could do some enameled sections. So there's lots of interesting options available that would be very different to the box art. I'll get my kit out and then we can actually make a start on this little shield. Well I say little shield, it's almost the same size as the palm of my hand. I'm going to start with a base of Death Guard Green on this one. As usual, I'm using primarily Citadel paints. I like them, they work very well. And normally with metallic you'd go with a black base or maybe a brown base, but bronze always has this very slightly green tint to it. And I want that to show through fairly subtly as I build up the layers. So starting with a green base is a good way of doing that and starting with Death Guard is great because Death Guard is a very muddy green which is just the sort of colour I'm after. Well that green is perhaps the slowest drying paint I own, that took a while. Next we're on with Balthazar Gold, which is one of my favourite metallics that Games Workshop do, it's incredibly versatile. I'm going to very roughly put this on, I don't need a very uniform finish, I want some of this green to actually show through, so it's a bit like dry brushing but with more paint on your brush. 
because this is so heavily detailed, it will pick up as much as you need it to without looking streaky and messy. Be very rough and ready when you do this, perfection is it's actually going to work against you. So we're trying to build up a lot of texture visually rather than physically and that means being messy. This is one of the paints that dries fairly quickly so you can actually build up your layers without having to wait too long. If you have a, a large smooth area like the middle of the shield here it does pay to go in a couple of different directions but remember don't try and be too uniform with this you just want about a 90% coverage. You need some of that green to show through for the next stage. You can sort of see how as the light hits it the green is showing through and we need this very dark gold as a base for the subsequent layers to actually end up going towards bronze. And Bronze is a very peculiar colour, it's like copper, it's its very own colour. Wash of choice, Athernian camo shade, at least for this layer. Now we just leave that to dry for a while, because it's a wash. That's the green wash finally dried. It's not very obviously green, but it will make sense as we build up the layers. Our next one is Sycorex Bronze. I don't really know how you're supposed to pronounce that. So that really brings that copperiness down, almost goes a little bit pink. And now we're going to put some warmth in it with some Auric Armour Gold. Not a lot of this though, sort of. Just doing a few higher areas, but not everything uniform. I'm going to mix a bit of the Sycorac bronze from before together with it. It's just a case of building the layers up until it looks about right to your eye for whatever particular type of bronze you're going for, I want to do something that looks fairly freshly cast. 
so very little green, very little wear and tear and corrosion, fairly bright. But I've got to be careful that I don't veer into gold, brass or copper. And that's quite tricky with bronze. So now we've got the warmth of the gold in there, I need to knock that back, but I don't want to go back into the bronze. Runefang steel is next. And to begin with, I shall mix this with a little bit of the gold that we had from before. And again, a very loose highlight, not uniform, just sort of see what evolves and looks right. With these being true metallics rather than non-metallic metal, you will get a very different look depending on how the light catches it. And then finally, we'll just use the room fang steel on its own. And we have to be very sparing with this because if I use too much, it will wash out the bronze too far. So just aim at the very high points. Just to pick out the tops of your details. Just give it that contrast. When it comes to the bits that I'm having to hold as I do this, there will be some touch up when it actually goes on the main model, but that will be easier to do when everything's together. There isn't really an easy way to connect a holder to this piece without it causing me problems later on. There we go, that is the bronze done. Now we can start doing some of the smaller details on here. Because there are a few gemstones on this. And a few details that I'm in two minds about painting. The gemstones on this will be semi-precious stones. They're a lot flatter looking. They're not sparkly. I'm going to begin with some corn red. I'm going to mix just a little bit of Auric Armour Gold in with it for the base. And the garnets will be like these little square ones here. ones here. Like I say, there aren't many. There's a few spots that look suitable. For highlighting, I'll use Evil Sun's Scarlet, another really good red. And you don't want to highlight these like you would your traditional gemstone. You want to highlight these like glass. So a very sharp point highlight, rather than going for the sort of bright spot underneath the gemstone of old. The 
can see very very subtle but just enough to give a little decoration on there I want to lift some of the details on the design of the shield so we can see it a little bit more clearly I'll go back to the Runefang steel just do the mountains down here now I was very undecided about whether I was going to change the metal finish or whether I was going to paint these details either would have felt appropriate but I've settled with this method because I'd like to imagine perhaps the details were polished or plated to lift them up it's a magical world anything's possible obviously but painting feels a bit I don't know it doesn't feel special enough for what the character is I shall do the same with the little glyph of Kragnos himself. He must think very highly of himself to have himself on his shield. At least I assume that's who it is. I'm not trying to be too uniform here. I want it to be. I want it to look a little bit hand polished, a little bit battle worn. And I shall leave the boss of the shield in bronze because it looks like a shield that he's holding. So that shield is this shield sort of thing. Agrax Earthshade next. I don't want to lose how the bronze looks, but I do want this central piece to be darker. I'm going to very carefully just apply this to the central boss of the shield. I've completed the wash and there's just one other thing I want to do before I put this aside to dry and that's to use some waystone green to mimic some enamel work. You can see that the wash just in the central boss area here really lifts out these details are highlighted in the silver. All the little dots of red there which are the garnets and now I'm just going to go over some of the metallic base to give us some green enameled areas not many though When it's applied over a metallic, this does give you a very convincing enamel look. And the greens do work very nicely over warm metallics like this. There isn't anything I want to enamel on the back. I'm happy with that as that looks. I believe this shield is finished. We shall let it dry and then I shall take some better pictures for you. 
Here is the finished article. Ready to go on the model. I'm really pleased with how realistic the metals ended up looking. The reverse is a lot plainer as you would expect. It should look quite nice when that's all together on the model properly. Here's where we're at so far with the model. Shield's just plopped in place at the moment. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. It gives you a flavour of the route I'm going to go with the colour scheme on this one. I'll do a few more videos on the rest of this model. There's a lot of work involved in it and a lot of different techniques and colours and that sort of thing to do. The base itself is practically a model on its own. Thank you for sticking through the video and seeing how I have a go at painting some bronze. Hopefully it helps you when you're trying to work out how to get the best out of your paints and your miniatures, or anything else you happen to be having a go at. Don't forget to subscribe, it does help increase the likelihood of people finding the channel, and I do appreciate the comments and the likes. It all encourages me to make more content and bring you more videos like this or something completely different. See you next time.